Parquet. Butter. Parquet. Butter. My little Mission Impossible thing there. We're just going through like all the, the lasers. Hi, my name is Tim. I'm a flooring and stair contractor. Welcome to my channel, built around flooring and carpentry. Together with what I know and you know, hopefully we can teach anyone to build anything. So please leave some comments on any of the videos you see. Contribute to the community to help everyone. So today, we have something really cool. We're installing some parquet, it's not butter, luxury vinyl flooring. And I'm actually teaching one of my new hires, James, who's never installed vinyl before, how to install this floor. So learn along with him. And the kicker today is we're gonna be installing this parquet in a tight, a tight squeeze space. Take off your big boy and big girl pants. Let's get think small, squeeze in there with us and learn how to do this vinyl. We're not gonna take any of the appliances out. We're gonna do start to finish everything you need to know about vinyl floor installation. So without any further ado, let's hit it. It's beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. First things first, we don't make anything easy around here. We're going to be installing it, no molding, right up to our wood flooring. So now everybody's going to say expansion, expansion, expansion. But guess what? Vial number one doesn't expand very much. And number two, we're putting the short ends of the boards up against this, this wood flooring here. And guess what? The short ends of any flooring expand much, much less than the long ends of the board. These ends here, they hardly expand at all. Doesn't matter if you're in wood laminate, doesn't matter, vinyl they expand much less than the long part of the board. And I've been doing this for 30 years and it's never let me down now. All right. Let's see, how's that look? Are we up against the wood? There it is. All right. Now see how that goes in? I want you to lock that. Lift that up on, a, on an angle and kind of wiggle it. You can even slide it down for a second and slide it back but you gotta get it to make sure it locks in all the way. So I would say wiggle it around. Now lift it up and I'll slide it until it bumps into where you, that you either bump the last board or you bump where you want it to go into, and then you drop it down. Now, the important thing is to make sure that your, your long joint here is closed all the way. So sometimes if it's not closing, right, you can take a, a scrap piece of wood. If you're not sure about this, sometimes it's a good idea to even do this and then take Take a scrap block here as a tapping block. A lot of times if we use a, a real tapping block, it'll damage the edge. This way, if we hit this, this is locked in. This isn't bouncing around over here and it won't damage the edge. And then just take a hammer or, obviously I don't have a hammer here, but, but and that way make sure that's closed. Um, it's, sometimes I like to do it every couple rows even because they look like they're closed sometimes. But if that's not closed all the way, it'll give you problems with the next row or the next board with the end joints not lining up. So you always gotta make sure that's closed. The flooring we're putting in today is not a drop-in lock. So our end joints don't just drop into place. So we're gonna hook it just like that. We're gonna hook it and then we're gonna lift ever so slight. Ever so slight. And you'll hear a little bit of a click. Bam, that click. That was it, now it's in. A good flooring mallet is probably the most important tool when you're installing any kind of flooring. Um, I like the, the Lixie, but even if you just get the, uh, the better one that Home Depot sells, the East Wing, or the Vaughn, I think it's called. And now, we'll use that. If you're doing a drop-in here, if we were doing drop-in, I would take it and hit my end joint in. We're not doing drop-in, so now we can actually Use that to make sure we close it as well. Now, I know everybody's thinking expansion, expansion, expansion. I'm not worried about expansion yet. Once we get the first couple rows in, maybe, maybe I get all the way to the washing machine over here. Then, then I'll pull the floor out. But for now, just let it go and then we'll move it in place where we want it. Floating floors are the easiest to work with. We can shift the whole floor around if we had to. So we're not gonna worry about expansion until we get a few rows in. Whenever we make our, our cuts at the end of the row, our, 
our last cut here. What I like to do is just flip the board backwards so that tongue, so that tongue is facing tongue, right? And now we just, we mark where they intersect. Now leave a little bit of expansion so we don't have to be perfect. Our base will cover that. And now this piece here, the piece that we don't need, we're going to use to start our row with over here. That'll be our starter piece. You see, how this, come here, James. This is important. You got to see this here. We're going to have to hook it, get it as close as you can to this board, right? Yeah. Lift it on an angle. I kind of like to try to keep my knee on this row so I don't flip the whole row up, right? And then, bam. That's all there is to it. And then maybe if, if you're not sure it close all the way, then use that little block thing, like I said, and that's all there is to it. Okay. Now, I made that look easy, but when you hit this big tongue here, <laughs> do it really careful, you will break it. So it is the, a lot of experience knowing how to hit it just right. If you smash it, you will break it. Not the end of the world, as long as you don't break too much of it, but just kind of be careful on that. You kind of get the hang of that, all right? And why don't you try to... Why don't you try to hook uh, this one in? I'm going to get out of there and do what I just did. Is this the actual glue panel? Just Floating. Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. It just floats in place. Yeah. The weight of it just holds it down. Yeah, you usually hear a little click sound sometimes. Use the side of it so it fits in there. Lift it up, though. Lift up. Yeah, angle it up. There you go. And do the same thing. Work your way down the board. See, it's open on that far end down there. There you go. That's all there is to it. All right, so now, the one thing that we need to do real quickly before we tangle this next row is to, I kind of shifted over when I was hitting it. So let's get a pry bar and just pry that end off for expansion purposes. It's a floating floor, so we can actually move it out. But that end of the floor is kicked in. Or you can kick it over with your boot. Just kind of kind of go like this and shift the whole row towards the washer. We got, you can't be on it, though. you got to keep one foot off it. You won't slide it with you on it. Just kind of kick it. There you go. Kick it back a hair. You went too much. That's probably pretty good. Let me get my hand here. Okay, let's see. And we're good. That's it. All right, so... I am going to go like this. Try, I'm going to get a little more leverage. And you're going to have to, to hook that and do that same thing that I showed you how to do. So, yeah, kind of lift it up. We need to get an angle to get this in. There we go. And now I'll kind of angle it up. Let me see that mallet. I'll hit this end in for you. I got a good... Now I think we're um, able to put them on the floor. I think we got enough reaches. That's it. Now if I was smart, I would have got over there first, but probably pull that. Oh, I'll get through here. It's my little Mission Impossible thing there. We're just going through it like all the the lasers. The lasers. But, all right, so let's run it out here. We start with uh, yeah. Let's go with that board there, right? That's it. Sink, huh? Shit. Not the sink. We just lift the sink up. It's not fast. Okay. Down. Hold on a second. Line it up on the track on the on top of the tongue. You see how you kind of kind of, it's like it's like the side of the tongue touching the side of the tongue. Yeah, you gotta be on. Yeah, there you go. Now when you hit it, it'll go. There it is. Yep. What? This is not. Mmm, that one you'll have to take it out. You'll never get it that close. Technically, you could get a pull bar and put it in the end of the floor and try it. It's just going to make a mess. Easier just to do that. Yep. Yeah, that's the worst thing. When you leave that end joint open a little bit there, it's just better to take the board out. You're good now. Make sure you're over the tongue. Hit it in. Oh, look at that. That closed perfect. So the idea is, if you lift that up too high, you'll pull this board out. The last board. <laughs> so you, you gotta lift it up, but not lift it up enough. That's why I usually try to kneel or, or keep my foot on this board, so you don't flip the, 
the whole row up. So this is my last row trick here. So basically we line them up above that row and then we'll use a board. It doesn't be like, as long as you're pretty close, like if you're like a blade off or two, it doesn't matter. Just basically you want to get it in the neighborhood above the, above the last row. So now you got them all lined up. Now you're going to put that board up against the wall where it meets. That's where you draw your line. So now draw your line and draw your line where they intersect. And that's where we cut the board at. So you kind of just want to basically lean it up and then use the pry bar in the wall to help you get it to close all the way. But you might not need it as much as you can get your fingers in there, which is not normal. Here, you got, oh, I heard the click. You're good. And that's all there is to it. Look that. Under the sink, under the washer, under the dryer. No threshold. Waterproof vinyl flooring at its best. Parquet edition. No, it's not butter. It's parquet. It's waterproof vinyl. And it looks really, really good. We did uh, no threshold, no transition to our wood. We'll caulk that edge and make that look even better. And then we'll install our base once they're painted in here. We got it done without taking out any of the washer and dryers. They take up over half the room. We lifted them, we angled it in, we made it work. And that is just how we do it. They didn't fit through the door without taking the door off. We weren't gonna take the sink, the door, everything off. We made it work and it didn't take us that much longer actually probably the same amount of time because we would have a disconnect and reconnect so if you like videos like this then please share like subscribe and definitely please turn those notifications on that helps us more than you realize we also have a paypal link below no it's there i just checked it's still there um, we're trying to get some better camera and audio equipment so check it out and if you're new around here, you're going to want to check out all of our other videos. We have lots of great videos on how to install wood laminate and vinyl floors, plus my favorite product reviews. I review wood laminate and vinyl, and I even put them head to head. I run them over, dunk them, I smurge them, I do whatever it takes to find out which of these floors are best for you. If you haven't subscribed, I want you to take out your favorite floor and mallet. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. And thanks for watching.